All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the weekly SIG Docs meeting. I'm Jim Angel. Today's date is October 15th, 2019. Just a quick check. Is there anybody who is brand new to SIG Docs on the call? I, looks like all familiar faces. I'm not new, but I don't know if I ever officially announced that I was new the first time I joined, <laughs> like a year ago. <laughs> Now's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I think I first um, hello, I don't know if I recognize before. you, uh, Ms. Yeah, I, I unfortunately, um, oh, yes, my name is Tamao Nakahara. Yes, sorry, I logged in as this. Um, and I think, yeah, I first came at the actual contributor summit because uh, I'd been intending to for a while. Uh, unfortunately, this time um, I'm usually doing a broadcast. Today is a rare day that someone else is doing a broadcast. So I'm just going to join. Awesome. Hello. <laughs> welcome. I guess welcome back and also welcome for the first introduction. <laughs> yeah. Great. So moving on to some updates and reminders. This week's PR Wrangler is Zach Arnold. I've seen him in some of the uh, PRs wrangling, so <laughs> everything looks well there. Um, and then next week is Brad Topol. And I believe Brad is doing a double header. Um, Zach, do you know if that was confirmed or not for um, Andrew's shift following that? He had mentioned it, but I haven't heard like any follow-up since. Um, so I think that's a reasonable assumption to make. Okay. And then also a reminder, just for approvers, make sure that you know in your schedule, there's a link to the PR Wrangler shift in the um, meeting agenda. So moving on to the main agenda. Uh, first thing I just wanted to bring up is the uh, third party content kept. So just some um, clarity on that issue is um, we're, we're, we're creating a Kubernetes enhancement proposal for what to do with third party content and how that is managed from a um, from a more of a, a wider perspective and what goes into the docs and what doesn't. Um, so that cap is linked in the agenda. And I believe Tim, you are working on that. Do you have an update? Um, I did a bit of stuff. I saw that Brad had done some stuff as well. We have not coordinated because um, I had a, a different weekend to what I was planning. Uh, but it's kind of at a state where I think it could move forward and become a full request. Great. So as far as ownership for the PR, I mean, I'd be happy to open it up. I don't know if anyone has any stronger feelings one way or the other of who actually opens up the PR, but I have a feeling there's going to be many iterations um, once it is opened up on top of it. Uh, so any thoughts or opinions on who actually opens that cup? I mean, I don't mind opening it as well. Uh, I wasn't sure if we were going to discuss <laughs> this before it turned into a PR, but if all that has to happen is it becomes a PR now, I can do that. Yeah, is, is there, I guess, a thought in the overall group whether or not we want to give this a week of just kind of soak time, or do we want to just get this in and start iterating on top of it? Um, I would like uh, a week, um, maybe not even a week, but I would like, uh, what do I want? Hours, Perennial man. question. Um, yes, I think a week of review would be good. Um, I also think um, maybe, uh, no, it's too early to say. I was, I was thinking about whether it would be good to have some synchronous time to discuss it, but um, I think let's, let's like take a review week and see if there's anything in there that we absolutely do need to think about before assuming that's necessary. Does that seem reasonable? Sounds good to me. I want to I want to check what I what I think you're saying there um, is that uh, at, before the next SIGDOX uh, meeting, there'll be a PR open because that review will have happened and there'll be a PR open. Um, yes, I think that's a great specific target to have. Um, let's say review. What's today is the fifteenth. Um, let's. So if we take until um, the 
next week is the 22nd. If we take until um, Sunday the 20th, uh, we'll having a day to open a PRB uh, enough or would that be like too tight? Um, I could probably open a PR in less than a day. <laughs> that sounds fine. Too share, too share. Uh, fair enough. Um, then yeah, let's let's take uh, until Sunday the twentieth for review on the Google Doc, and then um, uh, give Tim a whole entire day, even though he'll need only a fraction of it, uh, to open a pull request on Monday, so that we can. Uh, move forward with the, with the PR um, next week on Tuesday. Sound good? Excellent. Awesome. So moving on with the agenda, sounds like we have a good plan there. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Tim. And thanks, Brad. Um, so moving on with the process here, I believe this is a agenda item added by Zach. Is that right? Do you want to give a little context around the approval responsibilities and what you want to kind of structure this uh, chat around? Yes. Um, so this particular PR, um, I opened this. Uh, so I opened this pull request. Um, the uh, on GitHub, it's um, Stuart Yu. Uh, Stuart Yu is a, a longtime reviewer and approver for sig docs but um, it's really not like him to miss his pr approver shift um or pr wrangler shift so uh, i reached out and i uh, tried to reach out realized that we really didn't have a, an easily visible way to get a hold of him and uh that without any word or any any means of contact um that it was um, better safe than sorry to um, remove the approval permissions there, or at least set up the mechanism to do so while continuing to reach out. Um, so in the intervening time, um, I have gotten a contact, contact and an email um, from Stuart Yu on Slack. So we have information, Jennifer and Jim, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, we have contact information and uh, he also shared that he's uh, has been busy and will continue to be busy at work for another month. So uh, I was looking at the um, the community charter for uh, different levels of responsibility. And in cases like this, it seems that um, where someone's going to be away uh, as an approver for a while, um, it one of the best practices recommended is to move someone from an approver to an approver emeritus. Um, so right now, I think this PR just removes uh, Stuart altogether. Uh, instead, uh, I would recommend that we, um, I would recommend that I update this block to move Stuart you into an emeritus approver status um, with a comment saying, um, hey, come back when you're ready. Uh, so that way we can provide clarity and um, acknowledge uh, that anyone else looking at this file can understand or at least get an idea of the context and what's going on. Um, so that's what I'd recommend in particular. Um, I wanted to raise this for larger discussion because um, approver, approvers and chairs are the, they're the roles in SIG docs that have responsibility attached to them. Um, Chairs obviously uh, have a, a whole bunch, but approvers, the, the thing that we ask of approvers, uh, uh, in addition to like exercising discretion and good judgment in approving PRs, is to be present for a PR Wrangler shift. And so if someone misses one of those, uh, it's, um, it's missing out on the only real responsibility uh, that we uh, ask. So, um, I guess I wanted to uh, float for discussion um, the idea that if someone misses their PR shift, and uh, like stuff happens, people need to, to like move stuff around all the time. Um, but if someone misses their PR Wrangler shift with no notification, um, that, that, uh, that we open uh, a PR automatically uh, to um, 
like suspend folks as approvers uh, until they can meet their their PR wrangler shift. Um, I don't know the best language to use around that. Uh, we all have like this academic language like suspend, revoke. Uh, it's like going to the DMV. Um, but uh, whatever, uh, finding language to tie the idea that um, this is a responsibility that comes with a role. If you're not able to meet the responsibility, then step back from the role and the community will help you step back and step back in as needed. How does that sound to folks? I see one thumbs up, two thumbs up. Otherwise, people shrugging going, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think uh, I would, wouldn't mind um, tying into this. I know that Zach was working on, um, Arnold was that working on some sort of notification bot or a Slack chat bot. I, I can't think of the PR quick enough to, to link it in the agenda. I'll try to add it back later. But it would be nice if there's some sort of uh, nagging mechanism in place <laughs> or, or, or alerting a reminder on on your, your shift is coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, personally speaking, um, I unfortunately found out as PR Wrangler due to a SIGDOX meeting as I joined and I'm PR Wrangler this week. <laughs> All right, let me, uh, you know, be better at that next time. But that was, uh, you know, bad on me. But I wouldn't mind some sort of beyond me looking out weeks in advance of when I am and then earmarking that, um, having some sort of push notification almost. I thought about um, putting the PR Wrangler file that's currently, it's like a markdown file in the wiki, like making a JSON file out of it and just automating a bot to handle some of those functions um, a little more elegantly. But I don't know. Yeah, it would be, it would be nice to automate some of that away. Sorry, Jennifer. No, that's fine. Um, that seems like an excellent idea at, and worth discussing and discussing as an agenda item and slightly tangential to the question of Zach's PR, um, about which I just wanted to add that I really appreciate the thought that you've given to the situation and how best to respond to it. Cheers. Completely agree. <laughs> Sorry to go off track there on the uh, the reminder piece of it. No, it was useful, Jim. I tried. I tried to frame my comment as you know, plus one to doing what we can to move forward with some kind of reminder automation. I know <clears throat> I'm Stuart's not the only person who effectively missed their PR wranglership this year. Um, so, so yes, I would appreciate automation also. I just felt like it was worth pulling the two things apart. That is all. But opportunistically bringing it up, hey, I'm queen of the chase the shiny thing, so no worries. That's all I've got on that. So then do we have a decision for moving forward, how we handle this? Um, in terms of specifics for this PR, um, uh, I will update this PR to move Stuart Yu into the Emeritus Approvers block. Um, I will reach out on Slack to um, Jim, to you and Jennifer uh, with his contact information. Um, and uh, I was just thinking, do we need to clarify that? I think it's already pretty clear in the community responsibilities. I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to dual source even a little bit of the community responsibilities. Um, so I think that seems reasonable. Is there anything in there that I'm missing? Like something supremely obvious, like don't leave the baby on the bus, obvious or? I don't see anything missing at all. I'm ready to LGTM the PR now. Okay, yeah, sounds then. good to me. And as far as moving forward, um, you know, missing your uh, PR Wrangler shift, should this be a, a reaction that anyone could take? We noticed there's someone not active in the PR Wrangler shift. We make that motion to move it forward or at least open that discussion up. Or I guess how do you want to approach this if it happens again? Mm -hmm. 
I think that our uh, community mechanisms are in place. So, uh, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, blah, I don't want to restrict who can and can't open PRs arbitrarily based on topic. Um, so I would say, I mean, like, obviously we as chairs should be on top of the PRQ. Um, or the, of the Wrangler shifts. So it will most likely be one of us, but if someone else notices it, um, if for some reason, like all, all of us are unconscious or, or, or dead or like at a con, then we just don't think about it. Uh, I see no reason why someone else couldn't open it. I just, it strikes me as unlikely. I don't, I don't think that's a level of detail we need to manage. Yeah, sounds good to me. Good deal. All right, well, that's the uh, end of our agenda pretty quick. Uh, I'll open it up. Does anyone have anything else that they would like to discuss today? Uh, discussion I guess, topic. But, oh. yeah. I was just going to ask, is everybody going to be at KubeCon Contributor Summit? Is that the general? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a right. couple of yays and a couple of nays. <laughs> Just wanted to get a general sense. That was my only question. Go ahead, Tim. Will you be there? Yes, I've signed awesome. up. Well, I've signed up and I got the you're being considered email. Awesome. Well, hopefully we'll see you there. Yep. Did anyone else have anything they were going to talk about? Tim had something. Tim? So um, I just if anyone's got any comments on the KEP that's being drafted and they feel that a bit of talking time now is appropriate. Um, I mean, I think you should just, to be honest, I'm ready to PR that um, now, but I, I agree with like giving it a bit of time to, uh, to stew. Does anyone feel like a conversation now is a good idea? I wouldn't be for or against it, but I could see the value in giving people independent review. Cool, well, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Zach's thinking. <laughs> I am. Oh, that re does remind me there is a question. So the, the KEP window closes this evening, right, for the next release. So do, do the mechanics of that, uh, are they important? Uh, uh, that's an excellent question. And I don't think I knew that there was a, a window uh, per release, although when you say it, it makes total sense that there is. Um, yes. Uh, why don't Why don't we have the best of all worlds? Why don't we conclude this meeting officially, and uh, then why don't we um, continue reviewing and discussing um, the KEP? Actually, folks who want to go, like I think we're done with official business. Let's not stop the recording, but then let's continue for the rest of the time that we have. Uh, doing a review of the cat. Sounds great That's to okay. me. Okay. Let's say it's cat time. Okay. Better get it on screen again. Tim, do you want to share out your screen and uh, drive this since you pretty much have uh, done a lot of the work on it alongside Brad? Uh, this is where I have to see if I'm fighting Zoom or not. Um, <laughs> if not, I'm happy to share. Just wanted to offer that. Uh, yeah, if you'd share, I think that might be... Uh, um, I find that Zoom and Gnome Shell get on less well than I would like in a sort of crash my entire session sort of way. <laughs> All right, so I'm sharing my screen. Let me know when you can see it. Uh... I need to press the right button. Yeah, sharing is cool. I can see it. Great. And the one thing I did want to add to is with the kept deadline and from, from some of my experiences being part of the, the release team, it really seems like this might not be the best time to squeeze us under the door, I guess, <laughs> to get this in there. And I say that from a perspective of right now is when all of the people who are trying to get their caps in as true Kubernetes core enhancements, they do their last minute changes to docs and their PRs, not their docs, but their PRs, 
this is when we're trying to get everything under the radar that must go into the 117 release and it really it ends up being an unnecessary burden on all the folks who review the caps and, and the overall process and I, I I don't want to say we're special and we don't deserve to follow the process but this is more theoretical and procedural and I, I don't see this landing in a ah, release and if it needs to wait until 118 some of the preliminary work can be done in efforts to support the cap regardless of where it's at my two cents <laughs> I think that makes a lot of sense um, yeah that, that extra week of, of, of separating it and apparently there is an official process for submitting a cap outside of that usual window which I was thinking was a, the right fit anyway cool so I've never filed a cap so I don't know what's going on but I guess I'm looking at there's an awful lot of stuff in here that's not going to happen, like release sign-off. Just want to check that's not relevant, right? Should we play? Uh, yes, it's we're not really bound. Yeah, this is a process that's that mainly for something completely different, but it's good that we're following using what we can. Uh, this is a, like a direct copy and paste from the issue open, and I wonder if we want to tweak this before it goes in. That's probably the main thing that I would tweak because this is what people are going to. If if, if this is going to um, uh, trigger someone's pers personality or, or feelings to up, to upset them, this is what's going to do it. I think. So far, I like the language. The only quibbles that I have right now are um, uh, formatting rather than content per se. I'll, I'll mark Danify it when it goes in as, as a PR. Sure. So now is not the time to bike shed, I hear you saying, Tim? Uh, Google Docs and Markdown, they're different things. Very diplomatic. Um, so I like the summary as a summary, but reading it with your comment in mind, Tim, about it being the place where reviewers might hit a wall straight out of the gate, I'm wondering whether something that looks a little more like the first two paragraphs of the motivation section might be more effective in providing a lead in so that people can look at the details instead of getting bogged down um, in high level stuff before they even understand what the the core issues really are D does does that make sense i'm going to swap them around uh, i'm going to swap around um like live edit, uh, basically based on what you said. I think. I mean, I'm not I sure. I'm wondering, right? Um, I, you know, I I like the original, but I think your point is well taken. That we'd like the summary to be both an effective summary and maybe not reveal quite the potentially controversial stuff <laughs> until we we are talking about it in more detail. And I, I would agree with that, Jennifer. I, I, I think that we keep the summary pretty basic. What I didn't see in the summary, and I think you might be adding this here, is um, more of the desired outcome. Um, you know, we, we bring up the initial what's going on, and then it, it'd be nice to have kind of what the intention is of the cap also, but it looks like that's what you're filling in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm kind of typing out loud here, so... Um... Uh, so that, I mean, it, are we writing a policy that's aimed at approvers? Are we aiming at the authors? Uh, I would say both, um, because this affects, it affects what, uh, it affects what authors need to know and it affects what approvers need to know.
Consistent Jennifer, I think. Fan. Sorry, Jennifer, I think you're absolutely right. I'm sorry, I was looking at the motivation rather than the summary. Yes, oh. let's uh, sand off some of the harder edges of the summary. Well, I was just, what I was doing was taking what other people had written and saying, okay, let's see if we can just move it around to, to solve the problem. <laughs> um, I, I'm not good at, I mean, I'm really impressed, Tim. I'm not any good at live editing. Um, I am more than happy to take a closer look outside the parameters of this meeting, but I seem to be incapable of doing like real editing and typing at the same, and, and talking at the same time. Maybe typing and talking too, but that's sometimes different. Um, I'm used to using Visual Studio Code Live Share and spending the first five minutes trying to get the thing to work. <laughs> so I think that's been a useful um, synchronous bit of feedback. Um, my gut feeling at this point is that that's enough for now and we can take things offline. Uh, what do people think? Happy so to I'll continue. So, so while we're out here, what if we give it a kind of a quick once over, if we want to get deeper into topics, I think we shelf that or take it offline as an action item um, for further review, but I'd be happy to kind of walk this, um, you know, initially if everyone else is uh, okay with that. Yeah, sure. It would be really helpful, Tim, if you, if you just wanted to give us like a, a walkthrough, uh, okay, like cool. a, a high level architectural overview. <laughs> oh my word. Uh, I have not prepared for this enough. Um, yeah, so we've got a summary. Um, there's the motivation section, which really aims to capture um, what people weren't happy with. I mean, I think probably all of us on this call have seen PRs that we didn't think were appropriate um, or PRs that we sort of di did think like would uh, kind of like, well, I know what you're doing there. You know, you work for a big vendor and you're describing the stuff for big vendor, but all right then. Um, so that's what this motivation section covers. Um, my gut feeling is that the bit I'm highlighting here, top of page, there's no numbers in this app, um, at the bottom of the motivation section uh, is, um, this is, this is woolly. Uh, generally when I see a document saying the goal of this document, that's a sort of a, that's a sign that you need to do some, some editing. It's fine. It's not the it's not the final um, final product, uh, but that, that's a, a thing I, I've I've drawn out. Uh, I've, uh, I've uh, observed. Uh, then there's the goals. Yeah, uh, goals and non goals. I listed some goals that were just uh, my gut feeling. Let's talk about goals. I'm listening. Any thoughts, anyone? Yes, sorry, just reading. Um, <clears throat> I think the goals are straightforward. Um, again, I have like bike shitty thoughts about um, wording, but I think the the two goals of um, mm, so what, where, when, and how to include uh, third party content or exclude it, um, and then sufficient guidance uh, that others can follow. Uh, in some ways, like they seem like the same goal to me. I mean, maybe they're not, maybe there's a sufficient, uh, maybe there's a sufficient distinction between the two, but I don't know. I think, I think these are fundamentally the same goal. You are muted, Tim. Here. Then I press the like reveal on my windows button. Can I use computers on Tuesdays? I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah, I found in the comment there.
I'm more interested in non-gold because I don't have anything to put and I don't know if there are any. So, so one thing that comes to mind for non-goals, this could be a goal or a non-goal depending on how you phrase it. And, and I think uh, Joe, uh, Joe Beta um, did a good job of, um, of bringing it up. But basically the, the main goal of SIG docs uh, and, and documentation in general should be a successful user journey. And uh, I think that that should be one of the top focuses is making sure that we're not impacting a user journey by removing so much content that is, you know, no longer a helpful document. Um, to, to what that scope is, I'm not entirely sure, but just to make sure that, you know, we're not trying to sanitize the docs to the point where they're not helpful. Right. The goal is not purity. The goal is um, helping people succeed. Uh, so anyway, I've put in a sort of straw person uh, non-goal there, which I think we can we can iterate on. How's that looking for a a starting point? I think that's great. I think that is a really effective summary of the the pushback that we got uh, from steering committee. Cool. Right. I'm going to look at user stories. I wrote a couple. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think these are good places to start. Uh, I anticipate getting, I think where this cap is going to get really, um, really down in the weeds is when people talk about uh, how to decide um, what kind of third party content gets in and the, the standard for that. Um, We've gotten uh, feedback that the uh, arbitrary uh, structure that we've put on it of being somehow in the CNCF ecosystem provides an unfair competitive advantage. Um, on the other hand, uh, I mean, that's on the one hand, like we've got that uh, highly stringent, arbitrarily specific standard to meet. And on the other hand, we have um, a user story one where Alice comes in and uh, just engages in a straight up vendor show. Um, so um, like uh, Lubomir raised the, raised the question of Docker because Docker meets none of our uh, arbitrary mm -hmm. content standards imposed so far. Um, so where I anticipate this kept, um, uh, slowing down and getting really into the, the nitty gritty details is in how we actually set that policy. But um, I suspect that these user stories will be useful um, as a, like a way to set the tinder for that fire. Um, uh -huh. I so think this, uh, this reminds me of jurisprudence and uh, an observation I'll just make to everyone is that um, we are asking approvers, especially approvers, but I mean, all, all participants in pull requests, but especially the approver, uh, to make a judgment. Um, and what people do in, in legal jurisprudence is they look a lot at intent, you know, and you cannot, you cannot measure intent, you know, you cannot uh, write documents to describe it carefully. It is a, a remarkably tricky thing to communicate. Um, and you have to judge, and I'm okay with that. That's that's the you know going into this process, I'm okay with people making judgments. I am even more okay with multiple people from different companies making judgments together. I will capture that because I like that comment. Uh, you know, I, I'm wondering with these user stories, if um, it would be helpful to specifically list some of the, the content issues that we've come across with this. You know, for example, uh, the CNI page 
where Jim said, oh, he likes having all the tabs with all the instructions from all these various uh, networking interface live, you know, tools, third party tools. Uh, and, and, you know, it, that was one of them. Uh, in the logging sections where they're specifically linking to third party logging tools because Kubernetes doesn't have a logging tool. And I came across uh, one today that uh, I hadn't found before. Um, third party authentication servers uh, are, are mentioned in, you know, in a page with links to setup instructions and there's like three of them mentioned. Uh, it, you know, I, I wonder if, if including both kinds of user stories will help the discussion on well what what's acceptable and what's not. Because I, I can certainly add some of those. Uh, I welcome that, um, Amy. I would I would like examples. Okay. Um, Yes, I, I can couch them in um, um, like non-specific terms instead of just ripping out the, you know, the verbiage from the PR. I think people will be fine with uh, links to um, issues and PRs and pages. Um, I okay. Links. Agreed. Okay. Also, as a side note, Amy, at some point, um, having a having a comprehensive list of pages where we've got that. I know the umbrella issue uh, aims to do some of that, but keeping that umbrella issue current will be um, remarkably helpful think, for the larger yeah, I'm, discussion. I, at this point, I'm wondering uh, if I should start a Google Doc with a list and then just link to it from the PR so that we can all add to the list rather than commenting, commenting, and commenting. Mm -hmm. I would rather keep all of the information relevant to a PR, like in the PR itself, not create any more um, distance between information than is necessary. Um, okay. But so, that's a little, um, that's good. If it's, yeah, if so it's what, to, oh, go on. I was going to say, what I'll do in that, in that umbrella PR then is simply put at the top, you know, this is, this is an incomplete list. Please see the comments for further addition. That sounds good. So one thing that uh, if it's your PR or, or your issue, you can edit the description and you know, periodically summarize and, and revise and say, here are all the links. And I like it when people do that curation. And I saw a thumbs up from Zach as well. <laughs> and a nod. <laughs> cool. So yeah, basically that's possible. And I also recommend it. Okay. Cool. So we've talked a bit about user stories. It sounds like these are going to want to iterate a lot. And I'm fine with that. Uh, implementation details. Uh, is this going to be a big section or a small section? In the final, you know, um, approved cap. I think the hardest part is we need something actionable. And you, you kind of hit the nail on the head talking about intent. Um, you know, if you are going to expect approvers and authors to leverage intent or multiple reviewers for, you know, final approval, of say, or as like the gatekeeper, I think there needs to be a little bit more to that um, overall process. Um, besides saying, this is kind of what we think here, use your best judgment, please. <laughs> Having more of a clear cut rule set of what what this looks like and if we were to implement this today what would be the actions we would need to take um what would be the actions that are taken you know moving forward or you know proactively there um i, I think I, I agree with the general approach i just think there needs to be more structure to the how yeah, i think definitely mentioning you know rewriting our content guide because that's that's pretty much the actionable item coming out of this cap would be rewriting our content guide which yeah. anyway. So I think to, to sell this to the community and to make this workable, I think that, that the message we're getting from the, you know, the message I'm hearing from the community is that something that's a bit less um, flowcharty and looks more human and, and um, puts the judgment onus on, on uh, approvers is going gonna, is gonna to work. Yeah, it's, it does need to be rewritten uh, and it's been on the agenda, but that was put on hold 
you know, based on this, this cap coming up. Sure. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure what the words describing this in the cap would look like. Um, but I'm wondering about something where, especially when we first roll out the policy, um, we encourage approvers who aren't sure, well, anybody who's involved in a PR that might touch on this policy, um, if there's any disagreement um, in the in the PR comments, um, if there's anything that looks like it's going to hold up approval, that we explicitly invite people to bring an agenda item to the SIGDOCS meeting. Um, you know, that we're just remind people that there are avenues for discussion because there will be controversial PRs. And I would think that if we get ahead of addressing them, um, that might also assuage concerns on the part of KEP reviewers. Did, did that? Yes. So Jennifer, that made sense to me. And I think you have also talked about mitigating some risks. So. Well, yeah, actually. <laughs> I didn't use those words and I'm very fond of them, but yes. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a couple of bullet point um, um, rejecting a, a, a change that is ultimately deemed acceptable. Um, Um, and I guess there's a third risk of, um, um, I don't quite know the words for this, so I'd be interested on a suggestion. Um, turning people off from the idea of being approvers. Maybe those words, what do people think? Uh, or from c c contributing. Well, in the sense, if it, keeps vendors from submitting vendor pitches. Is that a risk or is it a reward? Uh, well, so let's, what I mean is I'm really, I'm talking about um, story two, you know, um, sure. Ubuntu and cube thingy and it's a popular project and we do want that kind of change. And, but Charlie's like, I can't even be bothered with this. I'm not, I'm going to disengage. Sure. Um, so our, our review and approval process already involves um, hefty amounts of feedback uh, to contributors. Um, so I don't know that this is really any different. It's uh, a different grain, but not necessarily an additional grain of potential feedback. Um, when you're ready, I have a, a, a note on a different um, a Go different it. layer of risk. Um, so it's not just about um, rejecting vendor pitches. It's also about um, uh, reducing and minimizing dual sourced content. Uh, that mm -hmm. is also, you know, uh, I guess a goal of this policy is to make sure that we're, uh, that the information in Kubernetes docs is accurate, timely, and um, the best available to, to maximize help for users. So um, you know, not just preventing uh, like ad spam, but making sure that we're not duplicating uh, information that's more accurate somewhere else, or maybe we have the most accurate version and maybe it shouldn't live in our docs. Uh, you know, what to do, uh, what to do with content that um, uh, really belongs elsewhere uh, as a single source. That to me sounds cool. like it should also fall under the implementation details as well. Um, Cause I'm sure that there are examples where we have the most up-to-date content. If it doesn't belong there as part of this cap, are we retroactively scraping that or pushing it somewhere else? And what is that process? Mm -hmm.
What happens to content that's already in place? Okay. Uh, test plan. This is not a code change. I'm going to move on, by the way. Uh, before I move on, are people happy to move on? Give me a thumbs down if you're not. Cool. Uh, yeah, there's no testing required. Uh, graduation. Uh, this is an interesting one targeted. because, yeah. So what do I do with this? Just cut the whole thing out? Yes. Cool. Or just say, uh, uh, I would say rather than omit sections entirely, just indicate that they're not needed. Yeah, I'd second that if we include the section, we add NA to it. Um, th this template that we're using was taken straight from the KEP template. If, if folks are used to reviewing um, KEPs one way, just having NA in there is going to be understandable, I think. Uh, I think... I, uh, um, one thing I would mention to people, and it's just what uh, Jim's saying reminds me, uh, people will probably not necessarily know that SIGDOCS works off master. Um, so, yeah, let's mention that somewhere. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to skip to implementation history. Uh, I don't know what that's going to look like. I guess it's... Um, same deal with not targeting a release. Implementation history, major milestones in the last cycle. Uh, I think this is like internally. Well, it looks to me like internally where we track the progress of the cap. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not needed for the drop for the initial PR. I mean, you could just like the first item in the history is um, draft. Mm -hmm. Okay. We could potentially use a section. There might be a, a better section, but I believe this is where in a, a traditional cap they would track, you know, um, this was implemented in this feature this time or these small sub areas. Um, I wonder if this is a worthwhile area to track. Um, this issue came up or here's the PR we're tracking to help resolve or, you know, part of the success looks like this PR is successfully closed, resolved, this, you know, Actions X, Y, and Z, if we open up a PR to move docs or change docs that are referenced here and it's a completable item as part of this cap, good, bad, or indifferent, it should be tracked as a driving force behind this cap, I think, but I don't know. <laughs> my, um, my feeling is like if we do a soft launch or some of the other things that we talked about, those would be good to track here. And um, have, with the suggestion of a soft launch having been made, I can see a, a, a place to put, you know, I can see what this is going to be useful for. I'm going to move on. Uh, drawbacks. Why this should this cap not be implemented? I guess I'm going to say that if you've got some f feelings there, um, it's always good to have that sort of uh, devil's advocate uh, position. Um, either put them in as comments, make a direct edit, or make a suggestion, all the Google Docs things. Uh, asynchronously. I think that's the best place to, um, or now, go for it now if you want. I've got uh, one and the same right now. Uh, yeah, sure. And the same for alternatives. Uh, and the, actually, I'm going to, well, I think on the, f the last bit that we're going to talk about is infrastructure needed. And I just wanted to check that no one thought there was any infrastructure needed. Cool. Yeah, I can't even come up with a scenario where, like, believe me, I am always on the opportunity to like look out for extra budget, <laughs> like ways to request it. But um, no, I can't think of a way that uh, infrastructure would be required. Okay. Well, that's the once through that you mentioned, Jim. Perfect. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for leading that. And thanks for all your work uh, on this cup. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Before wrapping up, is there any further comments about the KEP or anything else that we missed today? No, just thank you, Tim. That was super helpful. Sure. Sort of the countdown a little early, sorry. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Thanks again, Tim. Thanks again, everybody. Right. Talk to you later. Thanks. Have a good week.
All right. Have a good week. Bye.